changed uh, with statistics and so forth because change in seasons, uh, uh, winter time, and um, just fluctuations locally in death rates, which may be due to uh, environmental causes or whatever, have to be accounted for. So um, the weekly increase of excess deaths uh, over what was reported for, the, for last year in 2010 have ranged from 2.7% in one week, that's a huge change in one week, to 9.1%. And this is reported on the maps I have for July 9th through September the 3rd. So in the Pacific region, which is Washington, Oregon, California, Arkansas, uh, I'm sorry, Alaska, and Hawaii, the weekly increase increases between um, March 13th, I'm sorry, be between July 9th and, and September 3rd were and this isn't for every week, but I wanted to just give people an idea of the variation. 3.6%, and 3.5%. Now that's quite a lot of, ver that's uh, pretty, pretty steady. And that's uh, the Pacific region, and that represents 6,716 excess deaths. For the West South Central region, is it's Oklahoma, Arkansas, Louisiana, and Texas. And the weekly increase, and it isn't a negative decrease anywhere in any city. Uh, it's positive in all, all of the cities that, that have been reporting. So the weekly increase for the West South Central area was 5.2%, that That represents 8,730 excess deaths. Now, what's interesting is that Washington, Oregon, California, Alaska, and Hawaii, the Pacific region, is a much larger region. And um, Oklahoma, Arkansas, Louisiana, and Texas is a much smaller region, and yet um, they had a very much higher death rate. I, I don't know why yet, but I hope that I'll be able to figure it out. So the total excess death rates between March 13th and September 3rd for the U.S., that's a period of 25 weeks or about six months, uh, is 8,730, I'm sorry, it's 34,129 deaths. So um, that's going to be if you include the infant mortality and you include um, the increases in the next months leading January 1st, there'll be over 100,000 people who have died uh, since March 11th from the Fukushima radiation right here in the United States. Um, now, another, uh, did you have a comment? I can't hear you. Could you repeat that last statistic about the 100,000 persons? Yes. Um, we have, as of September 3rd in the United States, between March 11th when the Fukushima disaster occurred and September 3rd, which is uh, where this report ends, we've had 34,000. 129 excess deaths in the United States in 25 weeks. And by January 1st, which is about October, four more months, three or four more months, 
uh, I would estimate that number of total excess death rates in the United States, including infant mortality and including increases, which are going to happen because of the winter time, which causes a lot of deaths. Um, I'm sure that in the year uh, 2011, since March 11th, that we will have over 100,000 Americans who die because of the Fukushima radiation uh, contamination of our environment and the atmosphere. Now, w would you estimate from your knowledge as a radiation expert and as a, a um, and from an epidemiology point of view, will in 2012, will the total number of excess deaths from Fukushima increase in the U.S.? That is, will it be more than 100,000 or less than 100,000? That, that is, uh, could you which say that? way, yeah, could you be yeah, which way is the curve going? Is this the peak of excess deaths due to Fukushima in 2011, or are excess deaths increasing in 2012 over 2011? Well, um, we wouldn't be able to really um, say for sure because uh, what's happening at the Fukushima Daiichi nuclear power plant is cloaked in mystery and uh, hidden in a cover-up, an uh, international cover-up to protect the nuclear industry. But I know one thing for sure, um, this is a continual permanent point source of continual releases every single day in J from Japan into the ocean and into the atmosphere. And it's a very unstable situation. It's unpredictable. It's never happened before. It's the largest and most serious nuclear accident in the history of the world. And the melted fuel has melted down into the ground uh, from all three reactors. And we have no idea uh, what will happen. It could uh, have a huge explosion underground like happened at Chernobyl. That was very, very serious. But... Um, I'm quite certain this disaster is not over, and not in our lifetime either. There's no way to remedy what's happened because TEPCO failed to take the proper uh, response to the disaster, and there should have been an international effort with militaries and radiation experts to help Japan do it, but no one was allowed to. Now, but here, here is... Here is my point, that 100,000 are those who died immediately in 2011, comma, and the radiation uh, uh, was generally dispersed throughout the U.S. population, uh, especially by the harp-triggered tornadoes and the harp-triggered rains, so that people may, you've, you've dosed about 300 million people. Now, uh, those people may be increasingly getting sick of the 300 million over the coming years so that perhaps only 100,000 died in 2011, but from those uh, discounting even new radiation from the Fukushima event, those who were dosed in 2011 could in fact die in 2012 and subsequent years from cancer and other ailments. And that's the e epidemiological number that I'm trying to dig at. It seems to me that excess deaths were still on the upward curve. Oh, definitely. And um, uh, because the radiation levels are going to continue to increase in the environment and uh, a, a way to ha make a comparison is to compare um, it's to, it's to compare uh, the the atmospheric levels 
in Japan at the peak of the uh, the readings, the highest concentrations in Japan. And Dr. Chris Busby estimated this from air filters that were taken from cars and trucks, vehicles in the Fukushima area and also Tokyo and Chiba. And Chiba is between Tokyo and Fukushima further to the north. And what he um, estimated, and this is a very conservative estimate from the radiation levels he found in the air filters, is that the uh, radiation levels in Japan at the peak of the Fukushima contamination uh, was 1,000 times higher than the radiation levels Mary may measured at the Harwell British Government Radiation Lab in England at the peak of bomb testing. And so if we look at the effects of bomb testing in the United States, you can multiply it by a thousand times. Wow. So some of the some of the things that happened from bomb testing was infant mortality increased conjoined twinning or Siamese twins uh, that have not fully separated. They're, they're, uh, t they're still, um, they're, they, they've grown together. Uh, they share organs and, and different things. Um, they, and uh, I have seen a large increase in conjoined twinning all over the world, especially where in the areas where the depleted uranium is being rained out from uh, the bombing in Afghanistan, Iraq, and Yugoslavia. Right. And so we're seeing uh, conjoined twinning increases in animals and humans. Uh, the SAT scores, these are the scholastic aptitude tests that uh, high school seniors take for entry into uh, colleges and universities in the U.S. The, uh, the entire score average for the whole United States, this is all of the brightest children in the U.S., uh, college bound, declined 12% uh, for children born uh, during nuclear bomb tests. And the peak of bomb testing was in 1963. And the exact kiloton of nuclear bomb tests each year correlated with the percentage of decline in the SAT scores. So the dose you give uh, causes the effects that are more or less predictable. They're more severe, the more exposure. And um, what we're facing in the United States and in North America is just the destruction of the population. It's going to um, it's going to affect the population for hundreds and thousands of years. It's irreversible. Thank you. Um, I, uh, we're, we're now about halfway through uh, this segment, and I know that there's a lot of more uh, information <coughs> regarding radiation and maternal death rates, other topics. So perhaps we should move on from that chilling thought that you just shared with us to radiation and maternal death rates. Yes, well the highest maternal death rates, and they're on the rise globally, uh, but the highest ones in the world are in Afghanistan now because of the depleted uranium bombing campaign. And um, there are, uh, the, and they happen to be in one corner of uh, Afghanistan, which borders Pakistan, where the highest bombing has occurred, and that has caused horrendous increases in maternal deaths, and usually the baby dies too. However, in Herzegovina and Bosnia, Macedonia, and Croatia, which just had uh, the NATO war there in 1998, um, the maternal death rate is 10 or fewer per 100,000 women. Uh, Australia is lower than that, and this information is from the medicalobserver.com, which is in Australia, 
and they have 8.4 deaths per 100,000 women. Now, uh, it's very surprising that in the United States we have higher, 